Hey guys, quickly recording this to let you know, today's session was a sort of experiment. A student wanted me to analyze MKLeo and see how we can use those teachings to help his game plan. This is not how my coaching usually looks, but I thought it was very interesting to see how you can dissect MKLeo's choices and how it can apply to your game plan. So without any further ado, let's get into today's video. Okay, I think I can hear you now. Oh, hello. Hey, what's up? Everything going well? How about you? Doing good, doing good. I know it's been not too long since the last time we spoke, but uh, I figured we, or I kind of want to go over this kind of stuff. Yeah, that's cool. So, um, I assume you've watched this set yourself too, right? Yes. Alright, so anything that you kind of want to pay attention to in specific? Um, so... The way I look at matches, or at least before I started listening to your content, is I look at what my opponent is doing and like look at specific situations that they do and try and punish that to the best of my ability, or like the, the hardest punish possible. But what I realized what I should be doing is I should be seeing everything as different situations and then punishing that accordingly. So I might not get the strongest punish, but I can lead up to the strongest punish yeah. eventually. So I was wondering if we could go through the game, sort of looking at it in that sort of scope on from MKLeo's perspective. Okay. Um, so that way I get a better understanding of how to go about doing that. All right, all right, cool. Perfect, then we'll do just that. And if there's anything that comes up during the set, you can always just, uh, you know, pipe up and then we can discuss it. Um, but yeah, I think it, I, I, it's the best if we just do it um, the same as I normally do VOT review. We'll just watch the first talk, and then we can kind of go back and review what we saw, okay? Okay, sounds good. All right. I can't see your screen for some reason, though. Oh, it's that, so I'll try to share it again. All right. All right, yeah, I'm ready whenever you are. Cool, then, like I said, we'll do the first talk, and then we can kind of review what we saw. ...win against MKLeo an entire year ago, and now they're back, coming out here, and we're seeing the Wolf. The Wolf is in the building, and he did say that this is a character mm -hmm. that he wants to start using more often here in the bracket. He doesn't want to only just... Like tunnel vision on one character against his opponents, and I think Wolf definitely oh, has the tools okay. to actually face off against this character. Here we go, game one. Tweak versus MKLeo with a set count, all time set count, mm -hmm. of nine to two. With PGR, eight to two, but not PGR events. Uh, when you have the non PGR event, it's nine to two. And keep in mind, oh, eight to two. Okay, that's interesting. But keep in mind that the first few times that they did face off against each other, I believe Tweak was able to beat MKLeo. So it's kind of shocking to see um, right now that he was he lost the last nine times or so in a row. But Tweak trying to mix it up. Going Wolf this time around. I have not seen his Wolf against MKLeo. Okay. Almost ever. But let's see what he can do this time. Yeah, man. Like you're, you're, you're definitely right about that. It, it, it was, a, it was it. a totally different... All right, that was a quick stock. But I think I'm already kind of noticing something that Tweak is looking for, in my opinion. So, that Tweak is looking for? Yeah, that okay. Tweak is looking for. That's kind of like an error that MKLeo makes a lot. Uh, but then he kind of hits him once with Arsene, and then he, you know, makes it out. Um, and something to kind of note here, um, I know you play Joker, and you kind of want to look at Joker stuff. Um, mm -hmm. But the way these players play, they play actually, they play very similar. Uh, it's both like a mid-range, bait-and-punish style, where uh, recognize the situations and appropriate reaction is, off, is, is paramount. Um, so a lot of the things that Tweak does, you can apply yourself as a joker player okay. it just requires a different you know uh tool set so i mean that's perfect because i want wolf as a secondary as well for matchups that are more difficult all right so that works out well then okay so yeah. what i'm kind of seeing with mk leo a lot um or there's actually two things that i'm kind of seeing in this stock so thing one i'm noticing is that mk leo wants to shield uh shield aerials so that he gets a frame advantage and go from there, uh, which is good. This this works because Wolf's frame data isn't super impressive, right? So if you shield a Chrom forward air, you're not going to be able to get mileage out of shielding that move because after the forward air, they're going to hit the jab. Uh, you're going to be shit out of luck. But if you shield like a Wolf landing forward air, of course you're not going to be able to directly punish it, but it does create a good situation for you because your Joker you have. Decent out of shield, right? You have an up smash out of shield, which is a mix up, a grab out of shield, which leads to high damage, um, a backer out of shield, which we see in this stock. So, shielding moves 
is like a very low risk way of gaining a frame advantage which is like the most basic form of advantageous scenario right so mm-hmm. that's kind of what i'm seeing uh from nk leo um another thing we're kind of seeing from nk leo is um tr- he tries to bait his opponent in and then if it fails he contests the open space so if we're on the stage right he's standing right here his opponent's over here he dashes back and then if his opponent doesn't bite he will try to like aggressively take that take that control of this part of the stage back so that's okay, something I that too yeah so that's something mk leo does a lot that's something that joker is good at because of the uh basically joker has a lot of ways to claim space like there's dash tack which goes way further than most dash tack uh down tilt uh advancing there which is surprisingly good at taking like aerial space especially and then there's side b which a lot of people play around and that kind of opens up the the way for these other options right so when mk leo dashes back he could just do like a short hop and do like the floaty side b thing where he weaves forward and back and then at the that at the peak he throws out his side b Um, And a lot of people play around this option because it's so uh, low risk in a lot of ways uh, that it's very easy to mix it up with other options that kind of more aggressively establish the space. But Okay, I was going to ask why he would, or he likes to do advancing neutral airs a lot because it seems like dashing back and then advancing neutral air plays right into the opponent waiting to try and punish it. Yeah, so I definitely agree. Um, I think it's 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 a weakness of a lot of Joker players is that the so Joker has like this glaring weakness in that Joker is a mid range character, but they don't have mid range hitboxes. Like Neutral is good, Becker is good, but they're not like Shulk Becker. They're not like Politana aerials. They're not like Lucina aerials, right? They're not even like Wolf aerials plus Wolf airspeed. So he plays right. mid range. But he's not; he doesn't have the the airspeed or the aerials to really play a safe mid range. So instead, what he has to do is he has to rely a lot on his movement, right? So Joker is a movement re- uh, based character. So let's actually write that down because it's pretty pretty essential. Joker is a mid range character without dominant mid range tools. Instead, they leverage. Um, their impressive speed, both uh, dash dance slash fast fall, to feint and force the opponent to go first, then use burst range to with punish. So the weakness, like the obvious weakness in this game plan, is that yes, you can use your your speed to um to force a whiff, but if the opponent doesn't whiff, then you now put yourself into the corner. Uh, they can get mm. out of the corner with down guns, of course, of course. Um, but at the end of the day, that's not like a super reliable option. Someone who's good at the matchup will probably try to intercept you. Um, a lot of characters like in the meta, like the good characters, have amazing air-to-air moves. Like Wolf will forward air you, Voltaina will back air you, neutral air you, up air you, forward air you um lucina will enter you etc etc right so um joker needs to mix up this this situation after dashing back with either a, a a another defensive option where they kind of accept okay i've now lost this space that's kind of like what i've sacrificed or trying to claim it again and mk leo has i don't want to say a habit but a tendency to try to claim that again very aggressively the thing is so here's kind of the thing, um, and I don't know if Tweak does this in the first talk, but it's something that happens very frequently with MK Leo, is that MK Leo will dash back, right? So mm-hmm. common occurrence. MK Leo dashes back. Did I did I spell it right? No, I'm just I'm just stupid. Uh, <laughs> and then the opponent takes the space, and then MK Leo uses that moment to mix his opponent up. Which is weird, right? If you think about it, because he sacrifices space, so he dashes back, he's now over here. His opponent advances, tries to take the space that he just claimed, and then MK Leo dashes back in, and the opponent's like, oh, MK Leo is dashing at me, 
uh, I'm scared of like a dash attack because they're gonna reclaim space. So I'll shield, and then MK Leo grabs you, and then he deals 40% with a grab combo. So mm -hmm. this is how MK Leo gets a lot of his hits is by letting his opponent take space and then mixing the opponent up for taking the space because a lot of people are like they don't they're they're not that step ahead right and MK Leo is he's like when you take the space I will dash at you and force force you to defend or force you to pick an option in a lot of ways um, yeah that that sort of creates a rock paper scissors situation right. Yeah, because the opponent could also take the space and then play aggressively, or take the space and then dash back themselves, right? Um, right. But here's the thing, if they dash back themselves, then MK Leo by dashing forward, has claimed that space again. So, mm -hmm. it's, it's weird, and it works well, because Joker's dash chance is that good, Joker's movement speed is that good, and Joker's burst range is that good, as well as having amazing grab rewards. So it kind of all comes together, it's like a lot of like, um, on the surface, not super impressive options. Like, you don't want to rely on a grab to do your damage, right? Because it's it, it's pretty risky. Um, but because of all of these uh, elements of Joker coming together, it actually becomes a strong mix-up moment. Um, but I don't know if it's really occurred so far in this game, but it's something that I've noticed uh, from MK Leo's gameplay a lot. Uh, is that he tries to, you know, he tries to bait you in, and then even if you take the space, he still tries to pressure you for doing that. It's very good about him. Uh, mm -hmm. But yeah, let's let's kind of review what we actually saw. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's actually slow it down a little bit so that it's a little bit easier to see. So what we can see from Tweak a lot is that he, he likes to full hop, right? He tries to go over. Um, Joker in general um, doesn't have the most amazing anti-full hop tools. Uh, he can down tilt under in a lot of situations, but it's kind of iffy, especially with Wolf's airspeed. So that is kind of why MK Leo opts to shield these aerials. Um, it's kind of like a matchup specific thing. But then again, the dominance of these full hops is also like a very matchup specific thing. Right, so we saw the landing forward air, and MK Leo does an empty short hop. I, I'm like 90% sure that at the peak of that jump, MK Leo was like, okay, if he spot dodges here or if he rolls, I'm going to try to punish it. Uh, Tweak instead doesn't go for a defensive option after it just goes for a dash dance and tries to call out the continued defense. Um, okay. But you can see, kind of me, see... So, sorry? Oh, I, I was going to say, for me, if I was about to get hit by that forwarder or shield that forwarder, I'd try and go for a shield grab or something out instead of what MKLeo does. Just uh, doing something safe and waiting for... or to see how they react after they do a forwarder. So yeah, so maybe I should start doing that. The interesting thing here is that um, it's actually very hard to see on which side Wolf will end up here. And if we look at the moment right here, it's like Wolf is, is, is like, I couldn't tell you where Wolf is. And if we see like the shield drop, you can even see them being basically they're in each other, right? Mm -hmm. So grab would, might be a punish, but I agree with Leo here. He's like, okay, I, I don't know if grab is going to be punished. This might be a cross up. So instead, knowing, like, knowing forward air is unsafe, right? If you are Wolf and you do an unsafe forward air on someone's shield, what is your instinct to do afterwards? Yeah, like, cross them up, right? Yeah, cross them up. But say that you mm -hmm. didn't cross up in the first place, you would go for, like, a spot dodge to try to attempt a, a mistimed grab, for example, right? Oh, okay, right. That makes yeah, sense, some right? Yeah, sort of defensive option. Yeah, exactly. So that is what MK Leo is scouting here. He's not... This, this short hop is not a way of saying, uh, it's not a way to punish the landing forward air. It's basically MK Leo being like, okay, well, I would go for a defensive option here, so I will scout out the defensive option. And Tweak, being smart, does not go for the defensive option. Right? So there's kind of like two things at play here. Um, one of the things that we're kind of looking at is um, after you're shielding, you get the frame advantage. Um, there's... There's basically like a 50-50, right? Wolf goes goes for a defensive option, knowing he messed up. Or Wolf goes for, you know, a, a an aggressive option, I should say. Not respecting the punish. And in this scenario, Tweak basically went for the latter because 
And I think this is a good thing. Because when you're playing someone for the, like, I don't know, for the first time, uh, for the first time in a set, I should say, you don't know what type of option they will pick. So it's a good mentality to, to tell yourself, like, I will go for what is best for me, and I will only stop doing that if they prove that they are capable of stopping me. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's sort of what we talked about the last time we had a session. Exactly, yeah. So you establish your best option and you just ask your opponent, can you deal with it? Even if it's not like the optimal option on paper. Um, and MK Leo expected Tweak to go for the defensive option, but he didn't get the respect. So at the end of the day, Tweak won that interaction. Uh, but the fact that he was even in that situation uh, was a win for, for MK Leo, right? Because MK Leo shielded the forward air, got the frame advantage, and from there set up a an empty landing situation, which at the end of the day is in his advantage. Okay. Uh, that makes sense, right? Yeah. Okay, cool. The wolf. So yeah. The wolf is in the building and he did say... I think this grab by, by uh, Tweak is a little bit aggressive, but it's okay. MK Leo with, stay with. And then we kind of see MK Leo trying to play like the 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 whiff punish game, right? So they they get the whiff grab. They see they see um, Tweak retreat, and then they try to occupy this space aggressively and occupy it aggressively with a side B again. Um, I think this is a good thing because like a double neutral air could be too predictable while side B is like an aggressive occupation of like this whole real estate. Um, it's just a little bit more risky because he sacrifices more space for it. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like a trade off, right? But, but it, it, it's good to see that that tendency of MK Leo to aggressively occupy stage. And then Tweak, again, if we look at what Tweak is doing in that time, goes to the platform, sets up more vertical gameplay, right? So he's mm -hmm. he's very intent uh, on playing this vertical game where Joker doesn't have the anti airs to deal with him. And now again we see MK Leo trying to occupy the contested space here, tries to shield an aerial, kind of what we talked about. Go from there, back out of shield, and then just place the advantage. We can talk about the advantage, but it's mostly just Tweak going to the platform, and then going back to neutral. Um, but yeah, this is yeah. like this is kind of what we what we see is like MK Leo has this um, this kind of fifty fifty going on in a, in, in a lot of ways where he wants to shield the moves, and then if Tweak wants to use that time to set up his offense, that is when MK Leo tries to like offensively occupy that space instead. And it's hard for for a tweak to deal with because you know grabbing is risky and shielding is pretty pretty low risk. Think this is why did he do that neutral error? Yeah, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a on a limp. Like at the end of the day, I'm not MK Leo, so I cannot say. But I think it's because he expected MK or uh, he expected Tweak to retreat to a platform again. Maybe he wanted to hit the shield. It could have been just like a read on like a laser, maybe, um, because this is normally like if we looked at this positioning, which which is where he jumped from, this would be like a range from which you would normally laser. Um, but I would say in general, this is just like an aggressive mix-up. If we look at what like MK Leo's um, move choice in this game so far, in just these few interactions, it's shield, 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 uh, a whiff grab. And then when he approaches, it's all shielding, right? So a lot of his approaches were shields. So mm -hmm. I assume this is just kind of like the, okay, now I'm not going to shield. Now I'm going to mix it up with an aggressive option. It is a mistake. Let me let me put it that way. I think this is a okay. mistake. <laughs> um, but it's hard to say because at the end of the day, this was a player read. And I think while objectively it might be a mistake, there's also an argument to be made that sticking to the same game plan against a player of Tweak's caliber can also be a mistake, right? Um, mm -hmm. So if we, like, it's kind of two ways to look at it. I think it's important. It's important to mix up your movements across the stage uh, and why you move, why you move across the stage. 
right? So there's, uh, you know, there's advancing slash retreating, but there's also like attack baiting slash aggression, right? So you could be retreating and you can be aggressive. Like you could do a run back with like the, the side B that we saw. You could be advancing and aggressive, which is like a dash attack or what we saw right here, like a full hop nair, right? Um, and I think in this scenario, the decision was made just to like for the surprise factor, which is fair enough, right? I mean, surprise factor, it, it, at the end of the day, you're playing versus a human. Um, and okay, but he I did mean, put himself could play into sorry, oh, sorry. I was no. going to say it could play into like seeing if your opponent can deal with the option. You can you can look at it that way. Um, I think specifically because so far he's been very shielding, shield heavy and very like retreating heavy, just doing an advancing attack, something that he hasn't done before. Um, but he did put himself in a shitty situation. Like there's no denying that. Uh, I think if I was MK Leo, like if I were to tell him to do something different in this situation, I would have told him to uh, maybe go for an empty landing here. Because if he went for an empty landing, like, he could have gotten an empty landing grab right here. Um, and he there was no reason to really nair because Tweak was already landing himself. Right? So he he, did, he whiffed an aerial himself. So that's, like, the main improvement I could see here is, like, if you do an, if you do, did an empty landing, you would have gotten a mix-up. But that's a little bit hard to say. Right, so he gets that situation in his favor, plays the advantage state. And again, we see we see him. This is kind of what we talked about, right? So we occupy the space, then we retreat, and then we try to occupy the space again with the side B. Almost got it. And then he tries mm -hmm. to aggressively take that space back with the down tilt. Right? So even when he's retreating, it's, it, 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 it's a lot of taking space and giving space, right? And how do you play around that? And at the end of the day... Um, this is what Tweak did, is he did exactly what we talked about. He took the space, and then he retreated. Right? He took the space, and then he retreated. So that's kind mm -hmm. of like the weakness we talked about with MK Leo. Like, MK Leo dashes back, opponent takes space, and then MK Leo is that moment to mix his opponent up. Um, and in this situation, Tweak was not playing that game. Tweak was the one baiting MK Leo in. So that's like a big weakness of this type of playstyle. Um, and if you want to copy MK Leo, I would advise you to be very careful with these like down tilts when when you're giving up after you're giving up space, um, because they work well versus like aggressive opponents. If this was Mars, uh, it probably would have hit right. But Tweak himself is like very defensive, very uh, careful about what battles he picks. Okay, yeah, I was actually I've been meaning to say that too. Um, I struggle versus opponents that are really defensive and mm -hmm. they don't fall for like the bait and punish tactic where. Say if tweet or like uh, both opponents were underneath each platform, and say Joker's on the left side and my opponent's on the right. Mm -hmm. If I'm like playing the mid range, center stage and mid range, trying to bait something out, and my opponent just isn't falling for anything, I feel like I don't know what I'm supposed to do in that situation. Right. So how are, how are they avoiding? Because you're you're trying to bait them in, right? Right. And they're using that time to kind of approach you slowly, I assume. Yeah, approach me slowly, or if they have. Uh, like a projectile, just shoot projectiles safely from that position if if I'm not close enough to punish it. Right, so Tweak is a very patient player, but we've already seen him getting caught by the bane and punish, regardless. So something to kind of um, start off with is bait and punish only works if your opponent plays aggressively enough, but there's another ingredient that you need. Uh, and that's your opponent uh, needs to be in his slash your birth range, right? So your opponent will they will never feel forced to act if they're not inside a burst range. And just to clarify, I'm sure you already know, but burst range is the range in which neither player can react to the longest range option, right? So mm -hmm. if you're at like the max unreactable range for snake's dash attack then you're in his burst range um and in that situation you will force your opponent to pick an option right so if you're playing against a character who has a projectile so there's basically two um two ways to get around this or two ways for your opponent to get around this which is kind of what you mentioned uh one they have a projectile 
which means they just retreat and show, throw it out. And two is um, they're unbothered by the pressure. So that's kind of the people who are slowly approaching you, right? Mm -hmm. um, if they have a projectile, your counterplay is to approach them by entering your burst range. So if you're playing versus Rob, you try to like slowly get past the gyro, slowly get past the laser into your burst range, and then you kind of see how they react. Um, the core of the matter here is you are at a deficit in neutral versus projectiles, which means that you might not be able to play bait and punish, and instead you need to play like a more aggressive game where you try to you know read their projectile option and hit them for it the okay payoff there is that versus a character like rob or even mega man or even snake they have such a bad disadvantage that you get to beat them up for you know for getting your hit harder than vice versa um mm -hmm. the nice thing is if you hit them for using their projectile they'll stop using the projectile and play mid-range and then you can bait and punish them right um so that's kind of like a the conditioning thing um you can look at it a little bit more methodically which is what i do is i try to enter the burst range and then i then i play around the uh the keep away move which is oftentimes like a very clear option so for rob it's like rising fair gyro and sometimes it's dash tech, right? So mm. if these are like the keep away moves that I play around these moves and I don't commit, I just play a bait and punish that's a little bit more direct, right? Instead of baiting them in with movement, I bait them in by shielding the fair, by jumping over the gyro. You know what I mean? Uh, yeah. For snake, it would be like dash attack. For Samus, it's like a uh, shield plus a B. Or, or or grab right so a lot of these characters have like a few moves that are like get off me uh and when you get into that burst range they will start throwing out the get off me moves and then it becomes kind of like a mix-up around those moves okay mm -hmm. so that's generally how you kind of play projectiles if they're unbuttered by the pressure then it's a very simple solution like establish your burst range so if, if against these players that like slowly try to approach you um if they answer your burst range and they don't give a fuck about being in your burst range, hit them. And if they're, you know, if they're not trying to get further into your range, then use that moment to mix them up because they're probably waiting, right? So there's two kind of ways that they're unbuttered by the pressure. One is, um, or let's just call it 2A. Um, they don't care about your hitboxes and just rush you down and then there's to be which is they don't try to hit you they simply wait for an opportunity to approach you against these type of players you got to recognize the fact that to do this requires a lot of waiting so what happens is they come closer to you and then, for example, they will shield, and then you do like a dash back to bait them in, and then they use that opportunity to get even closer to you. Use that time that they give you to set up a good situation. So that's where, for example, what MK Leo did with like the full hop neutral air, that's where that comes in. Because you could do, like, if you know your opponent's gonna be in shield, just do like a an advancing short hop fast fall empty and grab them. Right, it's 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 it, it's that easy. Um, you gotta know, like the the hmm. the ways to get around like patient bait and punish are like either uh, overshooting, which is like rushing you down, in which case you know your bait and punish needs to be mixed up by you establishing your buttons, and the other way is to kind of wait you out and try to constantly get small advantages on you instead because you're waiting them out and they're doing a rea reactionary wait basically uh which means they're going to be able to react to your waiting style and get closer to you if they do that then you need to recognize the fact that they're waiting and actually use that opportunity bait and punish is 
not just baiting out offensive options, but also baiting out this type of gameplay. You can bait out the fact that your opponent is going to be patient and punish them for it by setting up a good situation. Does that make sense? Kind of, yeah. The like, so in my region we have a pretty good, uh, really good wolf, mm -hmm. um, and whenever I try and do the bait and punish playstyle, and they start, they they're pretty much unbothered by the pressure. If I try and uh, go back and uh, like um, set up a good situation, they just laser, uh, and it goes back to the having projectile. And if I get in close, it seems like they're unbothered. Either I hit them with a burst range option or they try and hit me with a burst range option. Right. And it just it just feels like uh like a rock, paper, scissor moment where um you know, I can't really set up a situation in my advantage. It's at best fifty fifty. I see what you mean. So Wolf is a little bit hard because they have one of the best neutrals in the game, one of the best burst ranges in the game, a, an amazing projectile. Um so the reason why your bait and punish is not working is because they're playing bait and punish versus you. And if you play bait and punish, they just throw out their projectile, right? That's basically what we're saying. Basically, yes. Yeah, so... Um, bait and punish is only entirely in your favor if your burst range is larger than theirs. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so what we're looking at here is you're, we're looking at a situation in which... Wolf has a better bait and punish because of his uh, burst range and projectile. So to get around this, uh, basically step step one is getting around their projectile, right? So you can play bait and punish without getting hit by the projectile, and it's just a break even, and it doesn't matter. Like it's that's important to understand. It's like the blazer, it doesn't matter, right? If if it hits you, it's seven percent. That kind of sucks. But you get one hit, you get five times that amount, right? If mm -hmm. you shield it, it doesn't matter. You just do a retreating jump out of shield. The the situation is over. You can full hop out of shield. You can short up out of shield. Um, you can jump over the laser, right? The laser, like Wolf's laser, is actually extremely fake. And a lot of projectiles in this game are extremely fake. Why do the projectiles work? Because they hit you when you try to do something. So there's basically like two solutions to projectiles, in my opinion. And one is don't do something, right? Basically, if you don't commit to trying to play bait and punish, then there's no way the laser will ever hit you because it's super reactable, right? And two mm -hmm. is specifically beat the projectile. And the reason why this works, because on paper this looks silly, Right? You, either you don't do anything and then you give Wolf all the room in the world, uh, or you specifically beat the projectile and then if he doesn't do the projectile then you're fucked. That sounds stupid. But it, the thing that makes this work is the following. If you don't do anything, uh, then in a lot of situations you can still react to what Wolf does. And the only thing that's really unreactable in that situation would be like dash attack, uh, which is in generally not the greatest risk reward. Right? Uh, if you grab the dash attack, you get good punish. You can throw him off stage, get the get the gimp. A kill percent, it's different, but that's why Wolf is pretty good at killing. The second thing is that you specifically beat the projectile. Now the nice thing is, if you mess this up, like this whole scenario, and they hit the projectile, then they get their like seven percent from their laser, right? But mm. if you specifically beat the projectile and you succeed, which will happen more often than not because you get you can use you can you can do it whenever you want so only when you have the absolute read that he's going to do laser should you go for the attempted specific punish right then your reward is going to be like 10 times that of what a laser could be so that's kind of I see. how you counterplay projectiles is you don't you don't do anything you let it quote unquote control the neutral even though it doesn't accomplish much it only accomplishes something if you if you let it, right? Only if you let it. Um, and then when you have a good read on your opponent's projectile usage, then you specifically beat it. And that is kind of that is kind of the the playbook against Wolf in a lot of scenarios. And once you start doing this, uh, and you you know you let yourself get hit by the laser, you don't panic afterwards. You just reset the neutral. It was seven percent. It didn't matter. 
um, once you start consequent like doing this consistently, they will stop using laser. Like if we look at, at at this game, we haven't seen Twig use laser once, even though there were so many situations where he could. Because what is the risk reward really when he knows that Leo is not committing to anything? It's bad. It's honestly bad because laser only wins if the opponent commits to something, right? The only laser we saw is here at the very beginning. And why did it not work? Because this wasn't the walling there. This wasn't the retreating for, uh, side B. It was an empty hop. It was simply there to, you know, gather data, keep himself mobile, whatever. It didn't work. And this entire time, it feels like too much of a risk to throw out. You know what I mean? If he were to use his laser while he was in the corner here, and Leo specifically counterplayed the laser, with like a full hop over, he would have been off stage and he would have been at risk of dying. Uh, and in a lot of like these neutral scenarios, MK Leo just doesn't doesn't commit to these types of options. So that's kind of what we're looking at. Um, but I admit, like at the end of the day, Wolf's laser is a good neutral tool. His dash tag is a good neutral tool. Um, but laser, like the, the core of what I'm trying to say is laser only has as much control as you give it. Does that help? Uh, yeah, I think so. All right. If you play against the wolf again, you know, we, we can totally review that VOD and then we can kind of see how this would apply in practice. But yeah. You're from MDVA, right? Yes, that's right. Oh, okay. Cool, cool, cool. Is, is the wolf... The Seagull... No, Seagull Joe plays Politana. No, no, it's Dexter. Oh, it's Dexter. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. The Betrayer. <laughs> he used to play Corrin with me, but, you know... Oh, what it yeah. Is. <laughs> So we get the whiff punish, tweak messes of recovery. Yeah, so I think this interaction too, this is kind of showing that MK Leo is too aggressive in trying to occupy occupy the space. And tweak is catching on, right? This is just lots of ledge trapping. Yeah, the advantage and disadvantage, I have a good understanding of. It's okay. mainly the neutral. Okay, cool. Yeah, so Tweak, Tweak establishes a lot of grabs in, in the second half of this stock. So I think I think there was one grab, and then he tries to pressure here with the platforms. Very smart. And then here he tries to grab again, gets hit for it. So we can see him establish a lot of these grabs, which is important because... That is how MK Leo got his advantage early on, right? That's how he got those first two shields on the forward airs and got some good situations. So Leo kind of very quickly moving on to not getting grabbed um, after specifically trying to shield Wolf. At the end of down throw, that's GG. Yeah, so at the end of the day, um, the a lot of the bouncing in this game is based around like advantage state. So if we look at like Wolf specifically, his neutral is amazing, his offstage is bad. So like, and this is something that that's like a really big error that I've made against Wolf, is um, I focus too much on how do I beat him in the neutral. Uh, well, while like at least half your win will be beating him in advantage, and that kind of sucks because like at the end of the day. One advantage is going to be amazing, and the next one you're going to, you know, he's going to drop out. Um, but it's important to know that in terms of like mentality, that you focus not just on winning the neutral against Wolf, but also on how do I punish his advantage as optimally as possible. So that was pretty interesting. See again, Twee going high, getting NC aired, trying to go high again. And that, this is the opposite of what we saw last time, right? So we hit it, we hit the shield again with an aerial, right here, or while we with. It's, it's basically mm -hmm. the same, the, the aerial failed. Now, either Tweak, like last time what he did was he immediately dashed forward, right? Um, I think he, didn't he dash backwards? Or was well, I mean, he, he crossed up and then he dashed, right? That's mm -hmm. that's what it came down to. He he picked an aggressive option, um, so in this situation, what would be the same would be him dashing backwards. That's that's fair enough, um, but instead, 
this time he respects MK Leo, does a defensive option, and gets grabbed for it. So that's kind of like the 50-50. And that's like super important because Joker places 50-50 a lot. Because in a way, shielding aerials and an aerial that whiffs lead into the same situation, right? It works because for Wolf's frame that isn't super impressive. Like after this missed neutral air, like Krom would have down tilted you without any care in the world. Like Rob would have down tilted you, Squirtle would have forward tilted you, but not Wolf. Wolf doesn't, Wolf doesn't have an, a move like that. So for Wolf, he has to play like this 50-50 where he either respects the opponent, uh, defensive option, or, you know, disrespect of an aggressive option. Uh, so it's very important to be aware of these situations. And we saw MK Leo first time, uh, we saw Tweak go for like the aggressive option. Second time we saw him go for the defensive option. MK Leo does what is smart. MK Leo assumes that his opponent goes for a defensive option. Um... Because if they go for an aggressive option, then they can both be... They, in a way, they can both kind of be covered similarly. Um, because say we're in a situation where like the forward air or the neutral air whiffs, right? If they mm -hmm. do like a spot dodge or a shield or uh, a roll even, you can do what Leo did. He can run up a shield here and then you can kind of punish it on reaction, right? So we run up here, we shield... We wait for the option and then we punish it on reaction. If Tweak had done a forward tilt here instead, it would have also been shielded. Right? So by simply waiting your opponent out with a defensive option of your own, you can beat other defensive options and beat aggressive options. And you kind of make it harder for your opponent to play this 50-50 and you kind of make it even deeper than it is on the surface. So... On the surface, it's like a 50-50. Is it defensive or aggressive? But then in reality, uh, the specific defensive option or the specific aggressive option also has its own counterplay. So if he had done like a retreating rising neutral air, uh, he would have gotten punished too. But if he had done a retreating jump and done like a landing forward air, it wouldn't have gotten punished at all. But then the shield on MK Leo's part would have still covered that and he's not in a bad situation afterwards. Right? So... If you if you put yourself of if you put your opponent in this 50-50, uh, I I recommend going for a more defensive option yourself to try to cover their offense and defense. And only when they show that they can specifically counteract your defensive option, only then should you shift uh, and and go from there. Right. So there's a 50-50 from Wolf's perspective. This is this is super advanced, by the way. I like. Uh, I don't usually talk about this. No, stuff. it makes sense to me. All right, at cool, least. cool, cool, cool. That, that that that's important. Uh, or uh, so this is basically what it comes down to, right? So they could call out that you go for a defensive option and go for like a safe reversal, like a dash back, uh, laser dash back spaced forward tilt. Uh, retreating jump landing forward air which is like a safe reversal in this uh, in this scenario um, which you could call out and then get like like get a big big punish uh, or you cover the other options with your like waiting defensive option okay mm -hmm. so these uh, are like real quick oh, no go ahead oh I was gonna say speaking of 50 50 um, Joker plays a lot of 50 50 right yeah um, so I'm used to uh, having like a really strong neutral option which Joke, like we said, Joker doesn't really have, like, yeah. in Brawl, Snake has a really strong neutral option with grenades, and if you get up close, jab, poor tilt, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. But with Joker, like, he has to play a lot of 50-50 because he doesn't have those options. Yeah. If you have to keep on playing these 50-50s, how do you um, set up advantage, uh, advantageous situations for yourself? Okay, so that's actually a really good question. <laughs> that's such a good question because that's exactly what I wanted to talk about. So, okay, perfect. Yeah, so... I'm actually, I actually got a tip coming out, uh, coming out about this, like, next week. Um, so what, what MK Leo does, um, is he puts himself, he puts his opponent in his 50-50, and then he goes for this, like, defensive waiting option, and then, okay, so this is what it comes down to, I'll give you the scoop. Uh, you put your, you put your opponent in a situation where they're forced to pick. Now you can either, on a read, you can hard 
uh, hard beat their choice. Or, so this is a con the consistent option, wait out their choice and go from there. So this is what we talked about, right? So you put them in the 50-50, then you kind of go for your defensive option, you wait for what they do, and then you beat that. Um, the thing that happens when you do this is you subvert your opponent's expectations. So they're put in the 50-50 and they're like, they're either going to punish me here after this with Ariel, or they're going to try to, you know, read my spot dodge. And then you let them spot dodge, and then you don't punish the spot dodge. All right? So you wait out the choice and go from there. So you can now either, uh, either punish the option, or wait out the option and go for another wait. And what this does is they're like, oh, I spot dodged, I messed up, I'm gonna get punished. And then they go, don't get punished. And what happens then? Well, at that point, it's like, shit, I did not expect this to happen. What do I do? He still hasn't committed to anything, so they can still punish me. So I better roll to get out of the situation. And then, and then you get an even harder punish on, on, their, on their option. So this is how MK Leo gets a lot of forward air at once. So he puts you. With, he he lets you with an aerial, then he empty hops, waiting at your defensive option. You spot dodge, and then you see the empty hop during your spot dodge, and you're like, "Oh shit, he's gonna hit me!" Then you panic because something happened that you didn't expect, and then you roll in, and then he catches your roll in with forward air one, and then he up air drag downs, and then he forward smashes you. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like. It's like a 50-50 that gets played where you wait out your choice and then you punish it. But if you don't punish it, you put them in such an unexpected situation that p people tend to start to panic. And then you can capitalize on the panic and get like the hard, hard read. Um, that, that sort of circles are back around to what if they're unbothered by the pressure. So say uh, I put them in a 50-50 situation and they hold shield. And so I could either hard read that and punish it with a dash grab. Mm -hmm. Or I could wait it out, like you said. But if they just unshield and then hold their ground, where do you go from there? Yeah, so if they unshield in that situation and hold their ground, then in that kind of scenario... So I'll, I'll tell you this, most players will not do that. Yeah, um, definitely most players would don't. But yeah, but the ones that do really screw up my game plan. Yeah, so that's like very high level. If, if they're ready to go for like a defensive option afterwards... And they don't go like, and they they they're ready for the defensive option to not be relevant. That's like that's that's very high level. Um, the way to punish that is to just go for the straight up punish, honestly. Um, and then, if you punish it consistently, then you will condition them to expect the punish, and then you can go for that extra weight, and that will mess them up that at that point. Okay, um, so it becomes like two fifty fifties. Yes. Yes, it is two fifty fifties. But the nice thing is, um, if you if you're unsure, you can always go for the punish, right? You can wait out their defensive option and just punish it. Um, mm -hmm. And this, like this extra weight, is like a luxury option. It's like if if you're if you're down, they're at like seventy, you're at one twenty, you got arsen, you can feel them starting to crumble. Like in the, those situations, this is good. Right or they're at one twenty. You're in arson. They don't want to die. Like those are the moments when you pull this out. But generally, I would say like the better option is to just get the punish that is given to you. Hmm. But that re that requires you to go for the fifty fifty. So if they're, I could either do a dash grab or a dash attack, and I'll either get punished or be punished. It seems. Well, so here, here's kind of the thing, right? So if we look back at this scenario, right? So they whiff the move, right? So here's the 50-50. Do they go for an offensive or a defensive option, right? So you run up mm -hmm. and shield. Now, say that they spot dodge, like tweak does. You punish it on reaction. Say that right. they go for a forward tilt. You punish it on reaction. Say that they go for a rising neutral air. You punish it on reaction. The only thing things that kind of beat this is if they um is if they grab you for shielding right or if they shield themselves and kind of dare you to grab 
in which case yes um it's kind of like a if you if you were to grab back it would be a risk but you can use the fact that they shield to for example set up a short up fast fall and then again it's a mix up but it's a mix up that is very much in your favor right so at the end of the day there will be situations in which you 50 50 your opponents and you could be punished or you could succeed um the i think the key to success to consistency is to find those mix-ups that are enough in your favor so that if they happen like 10 times in a game you you know you winning them means more than your opponent winning them i see what you mean right and and i think at the end of the day yes the only way to beat a shield is to grab them but there are other ways to tackle a shield for example you could use the time to set up a an empty short hop you could dash away and see how they leave the shield a lot of people will like roll backwards uh, a lot of people will like jump backwards and then you can use those you know those shield escape options uh to kind of mix them up and a lot of times so you use shield drop as an uh as an example a lot of times if someone is willing to shield drop that means that they're very comfortable in their shield which means that you do have a lot of room to grab them mm -hmm. uh and yeah. the nice thing is that you play Joker, so you get good grab reward. So it's pretty much worth it. For a character like mine, like I play Shulk, uh, for me that decision is a lot lot heavier to make, right? Because even if I get the grab, is it really worth it? Um, but yeah. I see. Yeah, so I was creating 50-50 uh, situations that weren't really in my favor before. So I just need to, or I need to set it up to where the 50-50s are in my favor, like holding shield right next to them yeah exactly so so that's kind of what we talked about right so if you get the 50 50 just go up and just dash up and shield and see how they deal with being in, put in a situation uh and if if they if they if they hold their shield then take them for their word you know like they're showing you that they want to shield grab them and the next time you can run up and shield again and see if they've adjusted see if they spot dodge this time and then your shield can Again, you can grab them. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. just using a defensive option to cover both defensive and offensive options, it's very strong, very strong. So like if I'm, so that's if we're like right next to each other. If say I'm fighting Wolf and mm -hmm. we're in each other's first range, would it be, so from what we've learned just now, would it be better to like run up and shield instead of going for like dash attack or dash grab in that situation to like, sort of sway it into my advantage um well in a neutral it's a little bit different right so the difference here is that he just whiffed the move right um or are you talking about like a 50 50 at those type of ranges like a 50 50 at in those burst type ranges yeah, yeah then i would recommend doing just 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 dashing up and shielding you can also do like a a short hop tomahawk forward and then shielding that's really strong as well uh but yeah like in general, if we look at like these 50-50 situations, they're 50-50s because your opponent cannot throw out a safe attack. Which automatically forces people to kind of reveal what type of player they are. Are they the type of player to disrespect you anyway with an unsafe attack? Or are they the type of player to, you know, go for a more safe defensive option and accept the situation? And I think that is more important than the reward you get is like understanding how does your opponent deal with being put in a bad situation do they respect you or do they not respect you because that is the the essence of the question okay does that make sense yeah okay but it sounds like you have a question on your mind uh no i was just like processing it in my head okay cool cool <laughs> Just making sure. But yeah, it makes sense. Okay, cool. Like, and reminder, if you have questions, you can always just send them to me after the session and I'll do my best to answer them. Sure. We're only one minute in, man, man, man. <laughs> yep, so he gets the big reward. Yeah, I think Tweak in general, if you look at this, like this neutral, that kind of makes it hard to apply to, um, to other wolf players or other players in general is like tweak uses a lot of platforms and a lot of like vertical approaches um 
which kind of makes his neutral very different compared to other players. Of course, uh, hmm. and the final you can sort of set up a sharking situation because of that, right? Yeah, but then, okay, so we can talk about this, but it's not like super relevant because it's not meta right now, but it will be meta soon, don't worry. So <laughs> if your opponent is standing on here and you want to set up a sharking situation, then you are inside of his burst range, which is basically like drop through or run of aerial, which is huge. Um, so the mm. only point at which your shocking situation is safe is like in this zone, and you're like in in the situations that uh, Tweak sets it up. Excuse me, uh, his opponent is in this zone, right? So setting up the shocking situation is hard because this is where Tweak is strong, basically. I see. Huh. It's... I didn't think about the burst range on platforms like that. Yeah. Platform burst range is actually kind of broken. Uh, that's why Chrome players do this a lot. Like they stand on the platform and then they just do run a four there, uh, because what what are you gonna do about it, right? Um, True. It's like it's like a landing aerial without having to do like the ascending part of your short hop. That's does, what it comes does down Joker to. Have, uh, does Joker have? Does Joker have a platform burst range like that? Um, I don't think his is that good because his he doesn't really have an amazing forward air on landing. And his neutral air is on the slower side. Mm -hmm. um, you could do it with, with neutral air, maybe. I'm not a Joker main, so I couldn't tell you. But you could experiment with it. What I do know that Joker has is that from the platform, they can obviously like jump and then do down guns. And then uh, get really good landings. So if you're ever in a bad situation, you can go to a platform and then down guns from there. That's very strong. Um, and on the platform, there is more mix-ups. So there's like the run of aerial. There's a drop through aerial, but there's also the movement on the platform, right? So if someone tries to, uh, like, do a rising forward air to attack you here, then you could do a dash back, and then drop through, and then punish them right there. Uh, there's a mm. lot of stuff like that. Like platforms are super underexplored. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to try that out because usually platforms in, in my head were at, like a bad situation unless you're fighting like Diddy Kong or a Squirtle. Yeah. So. If you want to know more about platform gameplay, definitely watch Tweak. Because Tweak is the only one who uses them well. Um, I'm trying to copy Tweak. I've been trying to copy him for months. I'm not good at it. It's it's like... I've been playing this game since Brawl, just like you. And uh, it's just not in my brain. Because in all of the Smash games until now, platforms were a bad situation. Uh, but in this game, like landing aerials are just, just that good. Mm -hmm. oh, so yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll definitely have to try that out. Yeah, experiment and see see what comes up. So I've got advantage state, first range. Let's see. Yeah, so it just calls out the side B. So this is kind of what we were talking about, right? So the projectile is very strong and very low risk. But if it hits, it's not that big of a reward. Meanwhile, if you specifically counterplay it, you get huge reward. I see. Empty off, Tweak just fishing. It's pretty interesting here. We get the landing aerial again. This time NK Leo trying to go for the direct punish. Which is kind of weird. I think this is a bad choice, but you know. You mm -hmm. never like the decision making is so fast that mistakes are gonna happen regardless. True. Yeah, so tweak with a lot of empty hops here. And then eventually getting the KO. Yeah, so Tweak, Tweak's oh, platform. So good. Yeah, his platform yeah. usage is crazy. Yeah, now that you pointed it out, that's so good. That is so good, isn't it? It's crazy, dude. And then he gets a 2 frame, alright. <laughs> that was a yeah. crazy stock in general, he just zeroed after him. Mm -hmm. um okay so our time is pretty much up uh already <laughs> we didn't even yeah. get through one game <laughs> i know that we were supposed it was supposed to be a vod review but i i really appreciate the the theory crafting as well yeah i think i think we really touched upon some really <laughs> deep aspects of the game honestly um any questions about what we talked about um i think we pretty much touched on 
uh, all the questions that I had. Or I, I was just asking them as we went through them, so I don't really have any right now. All right, all right, cool, cool, cool. Um, let me see. So I will send you the document with all of our notes. Um, yep. If you have any questions, if you have any, any questions, please just send them my way and I will do my best to further answer them. Um, yeah, I think, I think that's all. I, I hope that was all uh, informative enough for you. Yeah, no, that definitely was a lot to think about. And I hope next time I'll be able to have my own VOD. Um, yeah, I... that, that would be sick. That would help a lot, actually. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we, 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 uh... Like you and me, we talk so much theory now. Now I want to see how you play. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to go to offline tournaments soon, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see, dude. And, uh, you know, most important is that you say stay, stay safe. Yeah, of course. Of course. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I really appreciate it. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for being here with me. Uh, and, you know, I will see you around for sure. Yeah, definitely. Awesome. All right. Have a great day, dude. All right. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. All right. All right. Whew. That was a doozy. That was a lot.